Hey guys, and welcome to a new tutorial and a follow-up upon our last tutorial regarding reorienting animations within other third-party solutions like 3ds Max, Maya and Blender. So far, we were able to get us a character and animations from Mixamo and reorient the animations to fit our CryEngine standard. So what's next? Well, next step would be how to use those actual animations and make our character a playable character in the engine. Even though we did that already some time ago, I will repeat the steps from here on loosely. If you want to have a detailed tutorial on this process, please check the info box beneath this video. But we need this procedure with the exact same animations we exported from Mixamo to simply have this workflow pipeline done once. This procedure requires a bit of digging in the C++ code of the engine, which means you need Visual Studio. But you personally don't have to code or change anything. Just follow me here and again I'm running with light speed through those steps here. A much more detailed tutorial on replacing the playable character can be found under this video in the description. Having a new third person C++ project created, right under your library in the CryEngine launcher. We navigate to the location of a newly created project. Right click on game.cryproject and click on generate solution. This will take a while. Done? We should have a solution folder right here. Go into it and look for game.sln. Double click that file and wait for Visual Studio to open it up. If you have a bit of experience with Visual Studio, you'll know what to do by now. If not, just follow me here and don't worry. In the solution, we'll find the project folder. Within it, we'll navigate to the components and then to player.cpp. Somewhere here, you'll find the definition of our playable character, which sets the model, or for better understanding later on, which will be shown in our character tool, which we will also generate now. So just leave that software open and remember the line where you see the F definition is. It may change over time with some updates, so I won't mention any specific line. It's just somewhere here, okay? I mean, it's in the name, set character file, see? Programming is so easy. I mean, it's right in the name. Why, why all the buzz around programming? So freaking easy. Okay, minimize that. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't want to curse. It's, it's just a really bad influence of other people here in the company. Let's rather keep... God damn it, Alan, you... F sorry, now... We got that out of our system and out of my videos. Let's continue. I'm really sorry. The animations and the character we previously reoriented. Let's import the character into the engine. I think by now I shouldn't have to explain how to do that process. This is a bit of a challenge for you. Although I think this isn't a challenge for you guys at all. If it is, don't you worry my friend, there is a specific video I made for this exact problem. Do a bit of clicky on YouTube and go to the description of this video and you'll find the tutorial on importing stuff into the engine. Okay, we have our character with the animations inside, we have everything we need. Oh by the way, regarding stuff we need, for this tutorial I'll only require an idle and walk animation. We'll cover more stuff in future tutorials, but for now I'll stick with those two. Got those files? Just to be safe, let's check them in the character tool. Navigate to it and open it up. And there we go. We should have our character right here. He should be doing fine. We'll check the animations and they look also fine to us. Good. Close it and remember the location you put your character into because we need to use that path in Visual Studio now. Open it up again and replace the current path the code is referring to to the path of your freshly imported character. Done that. Now up here, click on the project and then let's build whatever we have changed there. By the way, for this process, I recommend to close the engine. Cool, no errors and we can save and close Visual Studio now. Let's continue within the project folder. Navigate to assets and then to animations. Go to the mannequin folder and then to the preview folder. Here you'll find the player.xml file. Open it up with Notepad or other softwares that enables you reading and changing XML files and change the path of the context data for third person character. Just like we did in Visual Studio and you're done. Next time you'll start up the engine, you'll have your character as the playable one, but without any animations. We still have to assign that, which we will do now. By the way, save the player.xml file and close it. Always say stuff. An important operation I don't have to mention to you unless I told you not to save. Save always, whatever you do. 
Open the engine and create an empty level or use an existing one, you're free to choose here. Jump into the game by pressing Ctrl and G. Check the model of your character, should be in T-pose and just, well, existing, without any movement. Looks fine? Good. Now exit and navigate to the tools bar and open the big monster we are all afraid of, Mannequin. Don't worry, I'm here to hold your hand, don't be afraid, we'll defeat him together. In the Mannequin editor we need to load up our preview, which gives us the option to change the animations on predefined tags like idle and walking. We'll tackle those in a different video on expanding our playable character, but now we'll use what we have. Nice, we should have our idle animation and our walk animation. If we open the first option of walking, for example, we'll have two timeline here. One for first person and the second one is for third person. We'll just need to change the animation for the third person here. Click on the animation and replace it with your walk animation. And do the same with the default folder within the idle folder. If you have multiple idle animations, you can simply add a new fragment entry. Click on the default folder and a bit further down you have this button here. If you then assign a new animation to the second option, the engine will play one or the other one randomly, so you have a bit of variety within animations. This goes well for hit animations or idle animations or whatever your beautiful heart desires. Now save everything we just did, you see, wasn't that hard? Oh, it will get hard, you just have to wait until we get into the real stuff. I'm excited already, but not in this tutorial. Here I wanted to simplify the steps with your existing character. We successfully replaced the default player model with our own player model. Now jump again into the game. Depending on the motion of our character, the player will either run forward a bit and then jump back to the root position or he will run continuously forward. Remember when I explained the difference between those two translations in the 3D world? Now this stuff is getting important. If you have that motion on your character, you need to re-watch the tutorial to have a better understanding of this, and then you'll be able to fix this on your own. In addition to that, you will notice that the model will jump back to the T-pose when you move your mouse while standing still. This is because we don't have any rotation animation assigned. If you want to get rid of that, just replace the rotation tag with the, an idle animation and this should be fixed. To have a proper rotation, we need to get into blend spaces. But not for now, because for now I'm signing off and I wish you guys a lot of fun with CryEngine. As always, you can let us know what crazy and creative stuff you came up with on our official social media channels. Give us a thumb up guys, so I can clearly identify the level of enjoyment you had watching this vid. This sounds a bit weird. Either way, hit that damn like button guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.